So this example is all about computation of load, which is the F, okay, the F, to produce specified diameter change. So here, when you read this, specified diameter change. So it's all about, this is your specimen, and due to some load, this specimen will add either compress or elongate, and this will affect the diameter. So let's say if compress, meaning the specimen is subjected to a compression force, what would happen? The diameter of the cylindrical specimen will increase and the length will decrease. So this one is before and this is after. And what if the force applied is a tension force? This is your cylindrical specimen. So when it is being pulled at both ends, left and right, what would happen is that this specimen will elongate. Can you imagine? It will elongate and the diameter will decrease. So this is before and this is after. So you have to be able to really imagine what would happen to the specimen or the material when it is applied a compression force and a tension force. Okay, it's all about the reduction of diameter or the increment in the diameter or the elongation of the material or the shorten of the length of the material. All right, so the question is a tensile stress is to be applied along the long axis of a cylindrical brass rod that has a diameter of 10 mm. This is the original diameter, which is D0. Determine the magnitude of the load. So magnitude of the load means the F. Required to produce 2.5 times 10 to minus 3 mm. So this is delta D. Change in diameter. If the deformation is entirely elastic. The material experience a delta D of 2.5 times 10 to minus 3. But it doesn't say whether it is, uh, you know, the diameter, the final diameter is decreased or increased. But the key point here is tensile stress. So tensile stress meaning this one, tension stress. So it is pull. D0 is 10 mm, all right? And delta D is... 2.5 times uh, 10 to minus 3 mm. What is the D? So the current D, since this is a ten tension stress, so meaning there will be a decrease in the diameter. So delta D here should be negative because if you still remember, the formula to calculate delta D is D minus D naught. Okay, so this is the formula. So if this is 10 mm, this value here should be smaller. If this value is smaller, smaller number, small number minus big number, you will get a negative result. So delta D here is then you know it is negative. So uh, this is the schematic diagram of what happened if the object is subjected to a tensile stress. So this is the original diameter and this is final diameter. Okay, after subjecting the, the stress on the material, this is the original length and this is the final. Okay, now let's calculate for the strain in the x direction. So this is lateral and axial. So the lateral strain equals to delta D over D naught. And delta D just now, we have, uh, I have shown that the value is negative and D naught is 10 mm. So you get the lateral strain as negative 2.5 times 10 to minus 4. And then you use Poisson's ratio, okay? This is Poisson's ratio. This is the formula. 
and you just plug in the lateral strain divided by Poisson's ratio for brass. So you can find the value for the Poisson's ratio for brass from this table. So this is brass and the Poisson's ratio is 0.34. Okay, so just plug in into this equation, you get this value. So then the applied stress can then be computed now that you know your axial stress. So you know that from the Hooke's law, your stress equals to your uh, modulus of elasticity times the strain, right? So you know your modulus of elasticity and you know your strain. The strain is uh, calculated from here, which is the axial strain. And how do you find the E? Using this table here, the brass or the modulus of elasticity is 14 times 10 to 6 uh, PSI or 97 giga pascal. So uh, this is Hooke's law and then this is uh, the one that you have calculated here and this is from the table and you will get 71.3 mega pascal for the stress. This is the value of stress and then from the formula of the stress stress equals to F over A naught. So here you would like to calculate F. You know your stress, you know your A naught. And A naught is just a simple because this is a cylindrical rod. So this one is just a cross section area of a sphere. And the uh, um, formula is pi R squared. So this is your R, and this is your pi, and you just times it with uh, your stress and you will get your force.